before I record, I always have like this, these topics, and uh, I get these topics, these ideas, and then the moment that I get everything set up, because you always have to go through and make file room, delete stuff, the moment that you get it set up, it's like, ah, oh, and then you draw a blank. This is ridiculous. I have never figured that out. After all these years, every time I go to make content, it just, all of a sudden, it's always instant blank. <sighs> Some green tea. I don't like it. Uh, I just, I, I got off coffee for about half a year now. I'm in a household where someone literally has an IV drip of coffee in her arm. I mean, I don't, th you know, there would be a brawl in the kitchen <laughs> if we ran out of coffee. I just can't stand it anymore. I can't tolerate it. Um, it just it gives my brain a horrible, horrible feeling. Even though uh, some people would say that when you drink coffee, you get a good feeling. Ah, I need to turn that off. It's annoying. The sound it creates. My little tin tin. Well, uh... Yeah, well, you're right. Sometimes I do drink a, a pot of coffee every now and then. Uh, but usually it's decaf if I drink it. Because I, I can't take the caffeine. At least for me, anyway. If I drink a full, strong cup of coffee, um, I literally can't stand up. I don't know what's going on medically, but I can't... I feel like someone is giving me a paralytic. And I just... I can't move my muscles... My hands are shaky. Uh, I don't understand how people can tolerate that stuff. That's not that's not me saying that things should be illegal or anything like that. I'm not a legal proponent for stuff. I'm just you know people should have common sense. I like the uh, there's a comedian that was talking about the difference between um, Amsterdam and the the surrounding countries, where you know there's signs everywhere and they have everything roped off. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, there we go again. See, I'm drawing the blank. But anyway, what I wanted to talk about was I was thinking about time itself, literally how we measure time and energy, and how the two are connected. So I was thinking about physics stuff, and what got me started on it was realizing that I've had precog precognition about because when I talk about stuff. Um, I, I get the responses from people before I have the conversation. So that's a little odd, if you can understand that. But what that means is that the content that I'm putting, or the, the things that you do in your life, it's almost like um, uh, there is a video about this, and it sort of explains... You know, when lightning strikes, right? It doesn't go from point A to point B. There, It's like a tree. It branches out into all these little fingers. And and it finds the path of least resistance. But the odd part is, is from the point where it's finding the point of the least resistance to its actual contact of how it's spreading out. That's a bit kind of like the way I think of time is there's all these branches that go out and then only one point and one connects. So it is, it's like a multiverse and it goes brrr, then boom, and then it, then it goes to that moment and then brrr, then boom, and then it goes to that moment, then brrr, then boom, and then it goes to that moment. Uh, that is my theory of it, because that explains precognition, because when you have the branches of all those fingers of time, they're all connected from the original energy source. So you have this communication from point A to point B and point B to point A. It's a forwards and backwards communication. So data, data uh, information is the only thing that can move through time.
Literally, it can go back into history and forward in time. Because it, it's the same thing. It just moves backwards and forward. It's only when you... Uh, um, okay, so like when I was talking about the uh, manufacturing um, for the phone, uh, how manufacturers, they're creating a lot of stuff that's not in our market and how people in this country get extremely, extremely angry, like almost violently angry if you don't buy a brand. It has to have a brand on it. It has to have incorporated after it or LLC behind it. It has to have some kind of legal documentation on it. Everything has got to have paperwork assigned to it. It's all got to be branded. And uh, it gets a little ridiculous. So when I get stuff that isn't branded or barcoded or UPC'd or FCC'd or EPA'd or any of that stuff, um, people get angry. They get really angry in this country. And they throw a damn fit. Um, because they don't understand that the world market doesn't work that way. And any time that you introduce two different separate world systems together, they're just going to play games with each other. They're going to do just enough to get by it with the regulations. In other words, the bribery, which that's all it is, is lucrative bullshit. And once you get past that... <clears throat> Um, once you get past the lucrative stuff, you know, the greasing of palms is something I've heard when I was younger, is what I call it. Uh, the information, the actual information, is never there. So it's, it's not available to the public. You can't get it. The engineering schematics and why it was approved and the decisions about why it received that particular barcode and which company it's under and why it's under that company. All of that stuff is hidden. It's all hidden. It's all hidden to the public. You try to search it, good luck finding it. I mean, there are some government entities that you can call up and get some information. And, of course, they'll ask you to grease their palms for the information. It's ridiculous. I mean, they're already being paid salary to do it anyway. Why should you pay again for the same thing? It's like paying to rent a book at a library. It's like quadruple taxation. Doesn't the library already receive funding from our taxes? Yes. Well, then why do I have to pay to read a book at the library? Because they're trying to make it profitable. But that, that does not circumvent the whole point of publica. Publicia to make something public. Anyway, my theory about time and energy is that it it can move forward and backwards in time. Not necessarily time travel, like the physical manifestation of something is a condensate of energy. So it's a higher form of energy that is basically condensed. Just like when you get water vapor from the air and it condenses into, into water. On When you have like a cold window or something and you see water forming. That's exactly what matter does. That's what matter is. It's, a, it's energy that's condensed into a state of vibration. And it stays that way. But once it's condensed, it just goes one way in the time stream. Uh, it's, but when you're in the energy state, you can go backwards and forwards. Which, uh, so, I've had a lot of stuff in my life, and people would say, oh, that's just uh, crazy, or you don't have proof of it. There's been a lot of events in my life that I've... I, it's like people knew beforehand what was going to happen um, but it, uh, how do you explain it sometimes people would say things to me because it was the finishing of a conversation that I was going to have in the future so it was an answer to a question that I asked in a future moment but I didn't get it until I got to that moment Maybe there was some kind of recognition in, in my consciousness 
but it just wasn't strong enough or to the forefront enough that it, it it's it's drowned out by the signals of everyday life of this matter condensate everything that's solid is a condensed form of matter which is odd when you think about it Oh yeah, someone did. Uh, someone put it one time that everything is moving from a state of um, possibility to impossible. Everything is moving from a state of possibility to impossibility. So the more time that goes, 